Lewis Hamilton wins the British Grand Prix. I don't think I've ever seen Lewis Hamilton so emotional after a race. Um, he actually had me cracking up a little bit. Um, just, just a little bit. Now, I'm not a big Lewis Hamilton fan. He, I watched Formula 1 all through his dominance, multiple years of winning, and I just got to the point where I didn't really like Hamilton anymore. And it was the same thing with Vettel when he won a whole bunch. It's kind of been like that for Verstappen. Didn't like Michael Schumacher, but after all of their many, many wins, and then they became not so good, I really liked them afterwards. Really liked Michael when he came back. Really liked Vettel at Ferrari and kind of at uh, Austin Martin. All that, and now Lewis, now that he hasn't been winning, man, I really like Lewis as a driver. I don't know, I, 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 everybody likes to holler for that, uh, for, for the guys that are up and coming and maybe that don't win anymore. That's why I'm a big Lando Norris fan. I think he's an excellent driver. He just doesn't really win very much, so I kind of really like rooting for him. And now I'm kind of a Lewis fan. Um, not like one of those Team LH number 44 tattooed on the back of my head kind of things but a big fan of his he's one of my favorite on the grid and to see him that that choked up over a race keep in mind i think this is 104 he's won like there's a lot he should be used to it by now but it has been 700 and some days i think it was the stat since his last win which is like a very long time for someone who is used to winning every single year. Here's Sky Sports' little uh, piece on it. Obviously, they made this and they posted it immediately after the race because they knew that it was a potential thing that was going to happen. And him over the years, overall, excellent drive from Lewis. He did everything that he needed to do. He was excellent in the wet, much faster than Russell. Obviously, Russell's car conked out, which is unfortunate. He had a water issue, which is pretty ironic today and at the very end of the end of the race on those soft tires you can see it didn't work for Norris but Lewis Hamilton is like one of his main things other than driving in the rain is being the king of lasting his tires all those battles against uh, Botas you saw that Botas's tires would drop off and then Lewis would be like bottom my tires are gone and then he would just keep going with them <laughs> forever for like lap after lap well hell he finished the mg obviously with the uh with the poster there so some other stuff that went on i had made this comparison a while ago that this felt like 2012 all over again if you've been a long time watcher you'll remember 2012 was one of those years where just there were so many people in contention now this is a little bit different where max is so far ahead but that Red Bull felt fourth best on the road. It, it, there was a point in the middle of the race, and I think if Max Verstappen wasn't just so incredibly fast on all the tires, and they had, he called those tire changes better than anybody else. He came in the lap that the conditions changed. I, I remember Lando came in the lap after, and then Piastri came in the lap after that. And you can see that Lando sort of got it right, and the Piastri got it even more wrong and ended up coming uh, out in behind Sainz. And Max just whispered that. And then he did it again going into the hard tires. So he just, everything right for him today as far as calls made by Max Verstappen. So there's a reason he's way far out in front. But for most of the race, and even Max said it himself, it kind of felt like they were going to finish fifth or maybe even sixth behind Sainz. But the biggest stat here is, I mean, we've had all these winners this year. There's so many of them. Now, the reason Max is so far out ahead, so if all of these wins had been Norris and Verstappen, Norris would be really, really close to Verstappen in the front. But because we got such a mixed winners everywhere else nobody's really catching him right so and i'm pretty sure with that finish for charles that carlos is coming up on him and the points so zach brown obviously on uh on x here or twitter or whatever, whatever you want to call it just calling it that they got it wrong i'd like to go over a bit of that right now though i have the lap time charts i know this looks like a lot of information but you can see from lap 26 up and you see when they came in for soft and medium tires on Piastri here. I've done the number crunching. I don't have it on the screen here. But if you take, okay, so if you take Piastri's times here where he was on the mediums. And then you see this, these times here. So 29 versus 29, 29, 30, 29. He keeps doing 29s, 29s, and then 28s near the end where Norris's laps turn into 30s. 
and then really high 30s near the end. If you take Piastri's times and you apply them to Norris's, Norris wins the race. Norris catches Hamilton and wins the race if he had a gun on to mediums. Because if you remember when he came out, he was only like 2.7 seconds or 2.6 seconds behind Hamilton. Piastri gained on Hamilton six seconds at the end of the race, which is absolutely crazy. So it would have been Norris, and he would have held off Verstappen no problem too, because Piastri was also catching uh, Verstappen at the end of the race. I think in Norris's hands, because I generally think Norris is a couple tenths faster than Piastri um, when they're on the same strategy. I think Norris probably would have won that had he taken the medium tire. So this is the uh, lap by lap. We can see all the drivers here. Now the top six kind of finished almost, except for Russell, almost where they started. Sainz move up a little bit. Big thing with me is, look at Kevin Magnussen. Look at that, 17th up to 12th, on pace too. I mean, he passed Russell, which is one of them. But other than that, that's just a great result from Kevin, Kevin Magnussen. That was genuine pace. Nico Hulkenberg, oh, that was a great finish for him. Sixth again, so that's two sixth place finishes for Nico Hulkenberg. I, I never did really rate Nico Hulkenberg in the past that much. Like him as a driver, he's super fun, great to watch, he's super smooth, he reminds me of Jensen Button's driving style, very smooth driver. Uh, but I didn't really rate him all that much. Uh, my opinion of him has changed because he is hauling that uh, ass into places it does not belong. Um, bit of a mixed day for Ferrari, uh, fifth and 14th. They pulled in Leclerc eight laps like just as soon as a little just just a little salt bay of a of a raining session came down and they they snapped and brought him in for enters and they did this before can't remember where it was was it canada where they pulled him in super duper early like these cars can dry a track it has to be halfway like level two kind of rains for it to actually stay wet on track and like just too early, too early, early before the rain actually really started coming down. So he was out there on eight laps on inters and he cooked them. They were destroyed. You could see as they were coming around the track, the, the treads on them, they were just destroyed. And it's because he was out there on a dry track. So yeah, water system failure. So I take it that as the intercoolers in the car. It was just, it was cooking the, uh, cooking the car up. So he had to retire. Feel bad for Russell. He really, I don't think he was as fast as Norris and Hamilton. He generally is not as good on wet tires as uh, those two are, or Verstappen really, but I think he was in the mix. And again, it was a wet race with changing conditions. Anything can really happen. So I feel bad for him. He looks super unimpressed <laughs> as well too. Nico Hulkenberg has scored more points in the past two races than Sergio Perez has in the past six. That was an appalling race. Now they did sacrifice Perez's race. They had him on hard tires super early. He had started on softs super early. He started from the pits because he took a PU uh, elements that he, he shouldn't have. So getting that out of the way, which makes sense. That's a, a tactical thing to do. But then they started him on softs to see how those ran to get some kind of data for the day because it was super cold again today. I think it was 14 degrees air temperature with like 17 or 18 track temperature. So it was like really kind of cold out. So they, they sacrificed him in multiple different ways. They put him on softs and then they put him up hard soon after that just to see how those ran to get Verstappen some data. And then they put him on inters when they put Leclerc on inters and he was complaining on the radio that it was just too dry, too dry. So um, they kind of used him as a guinea pig. <laughs> I think they used him as a guinea pig because they know he's, he's so slow he wasn't gonna catch anybody. He wasn't gonna pass anybody. Poor Leclerc here, and this is F1 troll official, a uh, man who, <laughs> who thought he'd lost all hope Lose his last additional bit of hope that he didn't know he even still had. Um, that was pretty much Leclerc today. Um, bad strategy. They weren't fast. They weren't fast in qualifying. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's probably why this is. Why Lewis was so... And I'll actually play this, this audio because... Lewis Hamilton wins the British Grand Prix! Yeah, he's just broken up on the radio. Like so broken up on the radio. And I think that's probably why Lewis, Lewis knows. He can see what Ferrari is. He wants to go drive further than him. I'm sure he's got some sort of nostalgia from watching 
Ferrari and all that kind of stuff back in the day when he was a kid. And it's kind of an iconic team. Everybody goes there because it is still Ferrari. But those guys are a bunch of clowns and have been since Ross Braun. Just, like, they kept Bonato for to- too long. He was an awful team principal. Arriva Bene wasn't very good. He was kind of like the old guard f- from before Braun. Oh, this is the other thing. Um, this played a big part in the race, actually. So the tire sets. So the reason that Verstappen went to a lot of these teams didn't they brought a lot of and they used them for qualifying obviously but they didn't bring it was only a few teams that had an extra set of mediums and norris and piastri was one of them and again that that kind of availability in your tire selection makes a big deal and we saw this in austria too where verstappen had to go on a used set of mediums at the very end of uh when they went when they went in their middle pit stop because he didn't bring more mediums with him. And I think the teams that are doing well as far as strategy goes, or at least having the option, are taking a more wider bunch of tires to each event. What was the other stuff we had anyone asked about replacing uh, Perez rumors? Ricardo was asked about it, and he says a lot of crazy things happen, but as of right now, he's got nothing. But after today, whew, boy oh boy, not looking good. Perez no longer secure for Red Bull seat despite contract extension. This was before the race, so he has scored no points this race. <laughs> so it's really there, some of the clauses they think that are throwing out there is that if he falls behind a 100-point gap, um, that there's a clause in there. Also, I read, where was the other one? If he's more than five positions behind Verstappen, that there is a, a performance break clause. But I assume these clauses are for his plus one because he has a one plus one. So he has a one year contract. Plus if Red Bull wants to secure him for a second year, which would be 2026, he has that clause that they can say yes or no. But I assume his break is for next year that that performance clause would be for this year but i guess that would be depending on what he signed two years ago right so maybe that has maybe it's just a very similar contract maybe that's a standard contract that red bull puts out that would make sense because they've gotten rid of albon ghastly multiple people in the past i mean ricardo kind of ran away rather than getting rid of him but that would make sense i guess if they have that kind of standard clause in there i'm not sure um but those are the rumors going out so we could see a change i don't know who they would take times again we didn't really see too many deleted times it's only only one page there i know we saw a couple from albon and there they are those two there but really i think the uh i think a lot of the track changes that we discussed that uh, actually helped out quite a bit so uh we'll see you all for uh, the next race i'm going to do the same kind of set of videos a lead up practice qualifying and the race and then maybe one other one uh thanks for joining me subscribe if you're new throw me a like if you got a chance and i'll see you guys next time